Questions 54 to 56. So let's see what we learn from the passage. We learn that um, brown, uh, the phenotype brown eyes, will be expressed if we have the dominant uh, uh, allele. So big B, B, or B, small b, uh, either of those cases would express brown, and red um, would be expressed with uh, the dominant allele R. So RR or R small r, and either way uh, that would express red. And if you have both brown and red together, then you will have um, maroon. If you have no brown, that's small b, b. If you have no red, that's small r, r. And if you have both no brown and no red, then uh, you would express the phenotype as white eyes. I would also say that it's a little awkward to work with bw for brown and rd for red. So um, I just tried to simplify that a little bit with the r's and b's. Besides that, the passage also uh, mentions that they are the alleles are found on chromosome 2, which is an autosome. So that's just uh, helpful for the back of our minds that this is not sex-linked. And also um, other information provided uh, suggests that uh, this is not a sorting independently. And this could have been disappointing for you because uh, having a dihybrid cross, you might imagine seeing some Punnett squares that are 4 by 4 uh, that's quite common. And in fact, I put the reference here for uh, GAMSAT practice test 2, which is also called the purple booklet. Questions 24 to 26 uh, from Acer uh, has a um, also has a dihybrid cross, but with uh, 4 by 4 Punnett squared. And also, if you have the HEAPS book, uh, HEAPS 1, the exam HEAPS 1, um, has a uh, 4 by 4 uh, based on sickle cell anemia. Uh, and there's some others in the book as well. So, for this one, um, so we have our setup. And there's a mention of crossing over in females that can occur, not in males. So, of course, that makes you think of the possibility of independent assortment. So we'll have to look at that as it arises. So let's first look at the first question, which is dihomozygous. So it's going to be homozygous for both alleles, red-eyed male. So if it's red and homozygous at that allele, the male uh, would have big R, big R, because that's going to represent red, and this is the homozygous situation, and this is the heterozygous uh, uh, condition. So that's red, and because red uh, is being expressed, that means um, B has is not being expressed, because if B was being expressed, then you'd have brown and red, and that would be maroon, but we only have red, so that means uh, B is not being expressed, so, so if there's no brown, it's BB, and that's the homozygous for the recessive. And then a female is cis dihybrid. So uh, we have already had it defined in the passage that trans uh, means that there's a recessive allele uh, of each gene located on different homologs. So trans uh, is just like in organic chemistry, when you say trans, it's on opposite sides of the double bond. Uh, so, and cis would be on the same side of the double bond. So, here we're going to have, if we have a dihybrid female, and the definition of trans is that the recessive is on uh, opposite homologs, that means cis must be the recessive is on the same homolog. So, here we have R and B on the same homolog, and we have, there, therefore, big R and big B on the other one. So that would be consistent with their definition of trans, and then uh, what we have to imply what uh, cis would mean. So then this is what the female is, but um, I just want to show you, because it says that there's a 50% recombination between uh, brown and red loci for the female only. So here I've done the same thing for the male, no change, and I've only switched uh, for the female. So, so you can see that the B has been switched over to the R, and uh, the big R has been switched over here. Uh, I'm sorry, the big R stayed there, and the small B came over here, and the big B 
uh, was switched over to the other side and small r stayed on the other side. So then this would be the switch, uh, the 50% recombination uh, case. So now we just have to see uh, what's going to happen in these uh, different cases. So here we have a combination of big R is going to give us red for sure and then B is going to give us brown because this is going to be dominant over that. So we have red and brown together and that gives us maroon. So this one will be maroon. Then over here we have big R and we have B. This is going to be expressed. So we have the same situation, maroon. And then we have uh, big R it's going to be expressed Oop, two little b's so when the b's don't express the brown so we just have the r being expressed so this is going to be red and then here again big r is going to be expressed as red and only a little b so that's going to be uh, red as well now going over to the other side we have big r's and little b's that's red big r's little b's red and then we have big R's and big B being expressed, so that's going to be red and brown, maroon. And then we have big R's and little B's again, red and brown, maroon. So um, we see that in both cases, uh, it's going to be one to one, and uh, the it's going to be maroon to red. So, uh, for question 54, the correct answer is D, maroon and red-eyed in equal proportions. So the recombination had no effect. <laughs> um, and then uh, 55, we have a uh, trans-dihybrid male. So trans means, again, the uh, allele for the recessive trait will be on opposite homologs. So here the uh, uh, recessive allele is on this one and then the recessive allele is on the other one so that uh, divvies it up and that's the trans dihybrid male is crossed with a white-eyed female okay so white-eyed female uh, necessarily means uh, small r's and small b's and so th none of the uh, color pigments have been expressed and uh, the issue of recombination for the female is irrelevant because as you can see whether or not it recombines uh, it's always going to be small r small b and so now we just have to see uh, what the results will be so we have um, r and big r being expressed here and little b's so that's just going to be expressed as uh, red we have big R's and little b's again, so that's going to be expressed as red. And then we have uh, small r, small, uh, but there's b, so, so the, the r's won't be expressed, but the b will, so that'll be expressed as brown. And again, we have small r's not expressed, but uh, b's expressed because uh, b, b is going to be expressed as brown. So then we have red and brown only is being expressed in this situation and so 55 the answer is C and then uh, 56 so often when you've done a significant amount of uh, work in order to uh, develop your answer you know if it did take a more than a minute or more than a minute and a half to set it up usually there's some benefit some payoff that uh, Acer will allow you to answer in under a minute because you set something up and then you can reflect on it and it should be straightforward so this is similar to uh, question 56 because it's asking you for the brown-eyed phenotypes which you've already assessed the brown-eyed phenotypes you assessed it initially in your evaluation but you also assessed it in the previous question and so answer choice A says, must be homozygous. They have symbolized it with the small RD. So it is homozygous recessive, and we have confirmed it uh, by looking at it uh, there. 56, so A is the correct answer. B says uh, homozygous for the uh, brown allele, but then that is uh, incorrect because that would not express uh, brown and can be either homozygous or heterozygous for brown. Uh, well, for the recessive allele brown, then um, of course that's incorrect because it can't be homozygous for the recessive allele brown. 
and then D can be either homozygous or heterozygous for red. Well, if it's heterozygous for red, then red will be expressed, and if red is expressed, then then it will be uh, maroon. So, or or it could be red if if brown is not uh, being expressed. So all of that is uh, is not good. A is clearly the correct answer. And you can read up in the book in biology chapters uh, 14 and 15 for more. And I can say uh, now that we have actually crossed over into the second half of the exam. <laughs> yes, uh, horrible pun intended.